The mother and the father. Oompa loompa. That was the last of the stump town. Oh, uh, my energy for filming right now is about a one and a half out of 10. So we're gonna film the most difficult topic that oh. we have. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, no. no, no honey. Look at you. Oh, you're so cute. Okay. This is a topic I plan on getting more or less crucified for by the internet, but it's actually really, really important, and it's super integral to what you see in our family. And it has to do with disciplining, training, um, babies, children. Um, but we believe that it can start super early because babies, contrary to how most people treat them, are super smart. Um, much smarter than I think we realize. So I want to show you guys one thing that we've done with Rainier already, and he is how old? Almost nine, 10 months? Nine and a half months. Okay, so he's nine months old. And look, so this is our fire. It's obviously very dangerous. And with this fire, there's two options that we know of. One would be to create a gate around the whole fire. That's one way to do the whole child-proofing thing. The other is to train the child not to touch the fire. But the problem is with this age, there's only one way to do it that we know of, and that involves physical pain. Um, they don't um, respond well to words or like just the whole reward thing, like we'll give you an M&M if you don't touch the fire. They don't understand that. Well, we'll say no at first, and then once he actually touches it, then the physical pain comes into play. So we've already started doing this a couple weeks ago, and we'll see if he does it now. I wanna show you guys what this looks like. And it, I don't want to show you guys what this looks like because no one wants to watch this crap on the internet. Like people want to watch like cats and people saying like, oh, just be nice to your kids. But this is actually the best and most loving thing we believe we can do for our kids. So what we've said is not only is the fireplace a no-no, but this brick is a no-no. And I think he knows this, but let's see what he does here. Hey, what's up? <laughs> What's going on? Okay, he's getting close. He, he does know that that's... Now he knows, because we've taught him. But we'll see what he, what, what he does. Hmm. 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 You see the fire? And actually, he'll go all the way around here. <laughs> and like... But he won't touch the brick. Hey, but sometimes he does. Are you gonna touch it today? No. 
No. No? Okay, I, I guess I should preface all this by saying, this is not a how-to. We're not telling you how to parent your kids. There's no formulas here. We're showing you what we do in the hope that maybe you can learn from some of these principles. Um, but we give them like a light flick and we say no, no. On the hand. On the hand. And the, the whole goal is to do it enough that it hurts. It creates kind of like a negative association with that thing to a point where the baby says, I don't want to do that again. If the baby doesn't cry, you might not be doing it hard enough. Oh, where are you going? Hey. You can do this for any object that you want. It doesn't need to just be dangerous items. The fireplace is like obvious, right? Because that's like very painful. That could be like lethal, but outlets, um, heaters, uh, even objects I'll show you. Um, like these books right here. Our house actually has quite a bit of things that the baby could just like destroy. These are all the kids like items. Oh yeah, the, the dog food is also a big one that we've, we've trained him with. We believe that you have kind of two choices. One is to childproof the world. And one is to worldproof the child. And a lot of people, I think, they spend their energy childproofing really just because it's easier. The problem with that is I don't even believe it's safer. I actually think it just avoids training. And for me, this isn't about convenience. It's not about danger, although those are factors. But it's actually about having the opportunity to train our children about some very important principles and the question is, when do we start? And we believe children can start very young. Um, and these principles are things like respecting our voice, um, obedience, because when they get older, if they learn to ignore us, or like if they go to the fireplace and we just like whisk them away, or there's like, we put up a fence, they learn that anything dangerous is basically out of their reach. But what happens when things that are dangerous are within their reach? That's when we want them to learn to respect and to hear our voice. Which happens, practically speaking, when they start moving around and can make their own decisions of where to go. Because we have the child's best interests at heart, and even when they're teenagers, when they're older, it doesn't matter, it doesn't change. We're gonna tell them things like, hey, don't uh, look both ways before you cross the street. Or hey, don't have sex with whoever the heck you want. Or don't eat sugar all night long. And if they don't learn to respect us, like don't steal, they're gonna get hurt. There's gonna be far more pain from them not listening to our voice than us training them to hear our voice. And ultimately, this is the same training that we think every human goes through um, with parents because we're learning about how to deal with our ultimate parent or God who tells us to respect and listen and obey his voice. But I know this is a hot topic because people, oh, what happened? Oh, boot him. <laughs> I know this is a hot topic because no one wants to cause their child pain. And a lot of times that's all people see is they're like, oh, you're abusing the child, there's other options. But if the other options are, oh. What's the matter? Well, you're kind of trying to vlog right now. You're, you're kind of getting in your way. Disciplining my kids is a really hard thing for me to do. Whether it's flicking my nine month old or putting my 12 year old on the stairs or telling him he can't go outside for the day. I think why it was so hard for me for so many years is because I didn't believe that that actually was loving them. That actually was better for them. That if I didn't do that, that there would be bigger pain for them down the road when they can make their own choices and decisions. I think I believe that more now than I ever have. And so it's easier for me to discipline, but it's still a hard thing for me to do. And it's still a choice I have to make. <laughs> ben was talking about flicking Rainier to the point where he feels pain because if he doesn't, What's the point? Even just this morning, I was flicking him for touching that brick and I don't think I was flicking him hard enough because that was just a hard thing for me to do.
And that's something that I've actually learned to look to Ben for help with because for him, that's not hard. Well, I guess I'm putting words in your mouth, but it's not as hard, I don't think, as it is for me. So he has a stronger belief and a stronger, I don't know, my, I don't know if you can call it compassion because that's, I think there is that, but I also think there's a, a weakness there too of, of, there's a strength and a weakness. Like we both have strengths and weaknesses. I think for us, it's a tension of short term or long term. And I live in the long term and Cammy sees short term pain, but I feel long term pain. I'm like, man, if we don't train these, these children, mm -hmm. first of all, we're not gonna be able to take them anywhere. Second of all, we're gonna hate them. Third of all, it's gonna be dangerous. No one else is gonna wanna be around them. And they're not gonna learn to respect adults or God. So that's, that's what's scary to me. But I wanna point out, some of you guys, this is, I, I'm sure this is really gonna rub you the wrong way. Um, Shocking. Yeah, and I, I think I understand some of that. I, I'm just glad that you're open to thinking about it. But if you were raised in a home, or if all you saw of discipline was that it was retributionary, or that it was done out of anger. So for example, you stole a thing and I'm like, you stole a thing, so I'm gonna bring justice down on your ass mm -hmm. and you get five spankings so that you pay for it. Mm -hmm. Or you embarrass me in front of someone. So yeah. I'm, I mean, that's the thing that I think I struggle with as a parent the most. This is not that. We are not talking about discipline in the um, like justice sense or like the kid deserves it or hurt them because they hurt you or any, this is not anything like that. This is saying, our kids grow up a certain way and we get to shape that as parents. And you see like the ultimate is um, Willy Wonka. Who do you play when your kid is up? Rat pampered and spoiled like a Siamese. Cat blaming the kids is a lie and a shame. You know exactly who's to blame. The mother and the father. It really is about protecting the children and doing what's in the best interest for them long term. And a lot of parents, I think, meaning really well, they say, oh, I'm not going to spank my kids. I'm, I'm doing them a favor. They're actually not doing them a favor. And maybe, and I understand this, maybe I think I, there was a fear in me that said, if I discipline, I'm going to discipline out of the wrong motives. And, I, and so therefore, I'm not just not going to discipline you're throwing the baby out with the bath water and there's something dangerous about that. I think in disciplining, do we make mistakes? Absolutely. We absolutely make mistakes and I've disciplined in anger. I've done out of anger. But I don't think that means we just don't do it. I think that means we've learned to not discipline out of anger. Um, and we do it as a team. Like sometimes I do it and Cami says, hey, I think that was too harsh. And instead of just saying, you know, shut up, I don't wanna hear that. I have to think, oh man, mm -hmm. you know, Cammie has the my kid's best interest at heart and she sees something I can't see. And then on the flip side, sometimes she does it too soft and I'm like, mm -hmm. hey, the kid's laughing at you right now. Yeah, <laughs> or they're not learning them. at all. And if you do discipline out of anger and you make a mistake, and I think this goes for any type of parenting mistake, just say you're sorry, like if you mean it. Um, to your kid and say, you know, what I did there was wrong. I'm really sorry. And I, I just think that that can go a long way. I get really excited around this age, nine months, even eight months, because they're smart, you guys. Like, they know. They know food. They identify, like, what tastes good. They know that crying does certain things. And that means that they're smart enough to be trained if we choose to. Now, we don't have to. We can like put fences around everything and that's that'll keep them safe, but that is not training them. Mm -hmm. And if you're not gonna do it now, I guess I would just ask, well, when? And it's gonna be a lot harder to do it later. I'll guarantee you but that. But this, let me show you guys. This is our evidence right here <laughs> that this actually works, okay? Where'd they go? Right there. <laughs> and right here. <laughs> so, Oh, we have we've done this with all of our kids and actually some of these adventures that you guys see like climbing mountains up here and doing all these whatever marathon type things 
we feel like this process of, of developing the type of relationship where our kids recognize our voice, they respect our voice, and we care about their long-term health is what has made a lot of these things possible. So I don't want you to think, oh, like, you know, the Crawfords are just crazy and they have crazy endurance and they can do all this stuff. And then my kid's a brat. I don't think kids are brats. Like, whew, didn't want to talk about that one. Does that mean our kids always hear, respect our voice now as 15, 14, 12 year olds? No. Heck no. No. Like if anything, parenting teenagers has humbled me and made me realize that I don't know what the hell I'm doing really. But we've learned a few things along the way. I'm interested in the comments. What age do you guys start? training your kids. My mom's walking away. What? Oh, sorry. My mom just walked away. I had no difference. But the comment below is check. Hey, darling, Dan. Ben wanted me to journal something down and I really didn't feel in the mood to do it but I'm gonna do it because someday I'll be glad that I did but I got my tea I got my chocolate bar Ben's parents just got back from being with Ben's uncle who died and it's good to have them back because they are just really nice to have in our lives. They help out a lot and it's just nice to have them around. So we're having dinner with them tonight, Dove's making dinner. Mmm, <laughs> look what we got here. Look what we got here. Steak that I picked out. Mmm. Yummy, yummy, yummy. <laughs> so, we need all to Hey guys, my name is Ben, and thank you for watching this vlog. We recently got more than 3,000 subscribers, which means that for a lot of you guys who are new here, you might not know exactly what we're doing. Our goal with making these videos is not to show you exactly how to do life, because we don't know your life, but we would like to share our life so that you guys can maybe have some conversations and it sparks some ideas that you can have with your family and friends about another way of doing things. So we hope that that helps. If you haven't already, we encourage you to subscribe to this channel so that you can get our regular videos because these videos weren't meant to be watched like just one at a time. It's meant to kind of like see our whole lifestyle so you can get an idea for what you're buying into. Um, and also I heard YouTube's doing some weird stuff lately. So 
One thing you might want to do is go to this little bell next to your subscribed button and then click send me all notifications for this channel. And that'll make sure that you get uh, all these videos where you want them on your newsfeed, I think. Thanks, and we're glad you're here.